and welcome to another treatment of the International Sunday School lesson. Today's lesson is entitled Freedom in the King, and it's taken from John the 8th chapter, verses 31 through 38, and it's for April the 24th, 2022, spring quarter, lesson number eight. Now, a little background information. Today's lesson is discussing the time where uh, Jesus gave some pretty harsh words to some of the children that have uh, children of Israel that came to him and discussed uh, the situation with him. And I want us to notice, and this is a little bit before the text today, but I want us to notice that Jesus had went up to the Mount of Olives and had spent the night up there, and then he had come down to the temple to preach and teach. And that's one of the things that is really important for us to realize is that Jesus would pray and he would preach. And we need to, those of us who are called into the ministry, we need to approach our ministry that same way to where we're doing both praying and preaching. Now, John 8, 31 and 32. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now, I want us to stop and think about this, where Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. And there are often times people who will show up at church and they will um, put on a good front and they will pretend, but they won't really follow through and are not very obedient to what the Lord has to say. And it is both professing Jesus and the obedience to, uh, to the truth that indicates that we really are the disciples, the children of the Lord. Okay? And also, too, we need to really get a grasp of this business of, of, of being uh, a disciple and that how that the truth sets us free. And sin is bondage. And people talk like, being able to go out and do everything you want to do is actually freedom. That's not freedom at all. You are in bondage to the sin that is over you. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 24, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And it is that truth, coming to the truth, that sets us free. You know, when the Lord called the Apostle Paul, on the road to Damascus, this is what he said. John, excuse me, Acts 26, 15 through 18. Then I asked, who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, the Lord replied. Now get up and stand on your feet. 
I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness to what you have seen and will see of me. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So what the Lord was telling the Apostle Paul before he was the Apostle Paul, when he was still Saul of Damascus, or Saul of Tarsus, excuse me, and on that road to Damascus, what the Lord was saying is, is that you are going to preach and you're going to teach the truth and that truth will set these people free. And it is the truth that sets people free. And it is the blindness that sets people and leaves people into darkness. Okay? Now, John 8 and 33, they answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Now, it's important for us to really grasp the ridiculousness of what they are saying. The absolute, utter ridiculousness. Now, I want to read what Brother Adam Clark said about this statement because he has a lot of, lot more historical knowledge than I do. Okay, Adam Clark said, we're never in bondage to any man. This assertion was not only false, but it was ridiculous in the extreme, seeing their whole history, sacred and profane, is full of recitals of their servitude in Egypt, in Chaldea, under the Persians, under the Macedonians, and under the Romans. This was the most ridiculous thing that they could have possibly said. And you will see people say some of the most ridiculous things in their arrogance because arrogance is a ridiculous, it causes people just to talk stupid. It's the, and, and that's what they were doing. They were talking out of this false arrogance. Okay? Now, John 8 and 34. Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. If you sin, that is your master. I love that song by Bob Dylan. You got to serve somebody. I love that song. It has got so much truth in it. And a lot of other things Bob Dylan did may not be all that cool. But that one song is absolutely the truth because you're going to have to serve somebody. It may be the Lord and it may be the devil, but you're going to have to serve somebody. Okay? Paul was talking to the Romans. Romans 6, 15 through 18. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey. Whether you're slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come 
to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. You got to serve somebody. Be careful who you serve. Okay? Now, John 8, 35 through 36. Now, a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. That is something that is the most blessed statement in the Bible. If the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. Okay? If Jesus sets you free, you are free. You may have been uh, all tangled up in that crack cocaine. You may have been tangled up in all that meth. You may have had a sexual addiction. You may have been uh, a, in bondage to lying and cheating and violence and all that stuff. But when the Son of God sets you free, you are free indeed. He is completely able and fully competent to save you to the uttermost. No matter what you, no matter what condition you were in when you started this thing, Jesus is completely able to save you to the uttermost, to redeem you from whatever you're into. Okay. Paul was talking to the Romans. Romans 8, 1 and 2. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. When Jesus sets you free, you are free free indeed. Okay? Now, Romans 8, 37 through 38. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence and you are doing what you have heard from your father. Now, it's important. It's an important idea, an important concept. This idea of there's no room for my word. And if you remember back to the parable that Jesus was telling us, about the sower sowing seeds. And then there were different things that cropped up and began to choke out the word, that began to choke out the seed, the cares of this life, the concerns for money, the concerns for prestige, the concerns for power, the concerns for politics, the concerns for a uh, good name, the concerns for people's opinion. And it begins to choke out the words of truth. And that's what ends up happening. And that there's no room for the word of God because the cares of this life have choked it out. We see different times. Like, for example, when Paul was preaching Acts 13, 44 through 45, on 
the next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy. They began to contradict what Paul was saying and heaped abuse on him. So we see there how that they had their prestige, they had their money, they had their political standing, and they began to get jealous because they knew that these words of life would be would bring about a change in everything. And it began to choke out the truth that they were hearing Paul say. And they were, and it was being replaced with jealousy. Okay? Now, 1 Corinthians 2 and 14. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. So we see here how Paul is talking to the Corinthians and people will, in their arrogance, in their vainglory, in their over, over estimation of their in intellect and being concerned about what others think about them, that these people let the wisdom of God, the true spiritual wisdom, they let their arrogance choke it out. And it begins to look and feel like foolishness to them. And we see this happen all of the time. And it is so pitiful when we see that happening of people that are letting their arrogance overcome them and to choke out the truth of God. Okay? Now, let's talk about a little bit of some concluding thoughts about this. First off, those of us that are in the ministry, I think this is really important to get a grip, a grip on. And I think it's important, not just me saying this to you, it's also important for me to understand this and never forget this in my life. The only good that comes out of our preaching, the only fruit that will ever come from our teaching is fruit that God Almighty brings forth. That's why it is so critical that we keep a, those of us in the ministry, that we keep a personal relationship with the Lord God. We need to pray and pray until we pray through. And I tell you what, if the Son of God had to go up into the Mount of Olives and pray all night, if he had to go into the, the Garden of Gethsemane and pray, if he had to pray, I guarantee you we need to be praying. Now, the other thing, too, that's important for us to remember from today's lesson is the fact that the Lord God, the truth he gives us, will set us free. And the lies of the devil put us in bondage. And serving the Lord is freedom. Serving the devil is death and bondage. Okay? Well, friends, good Lord willing, I'll be back with you next weekend.